Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. Um, we broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time and we do record the show every week. Um, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. You can always go to our website and watch any of our recordings. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where those archives are that you can watch. Both the live show and the uh, recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone who, can, who you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Um, we do do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live, uh, book reviews, interviews, uh, mini training sessions, demos of services and products. Uh, basically, our only criteria that it is something that has to do with libraries, something that libraries are doing, something that we think libraries should be doing, uh, new services or products that may be of interest to libraries, and uh, it could be libraries of all types. Um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission, we are the state library, state agency for libraries across the state, and that is all states, all, all libraries, um, public, academic, K-12, correctional, museums, if you're a library, we would have something on the show for you. Uh, we do do um, have Nebraska Library Commission staff sometimes come on and do presentations for us for things that we're offering here through the Library Commission specifically, but we also have, bring in guest speakers, and that's what we have this morning. On the line with us is uh, Janet McAllister, and she is the director of the Rochester Public Library District in Rochester, Illinois. Good morning, Janet. Good morning. Thank you. Hi, and she's going to talk to us about, and as you can see on her screen here, engaging your community, some great patron-driven programs, things that they've done at their library. Um, now, this is a session, I'll, I'll tell you, that was originally, uh, we do also here out of the Nebraska Library Commission, an annual online conference, a one a whole day long set of sessions uh, called Big Talk from Small Libraries. That's done at the end of February, and it is libraries who are, have a population served or an FTE of less than 10,000 or less, so small libraries. And this is one session, we, we get too many submissions, too many proposals for our uh, one day long conference. Um, so we, if any of them that we can't fit onto that day, I bring onto our weekly Encompass Live. Maybe someday we'll extend it to two days, we'll see. I'm in charge of that, so we'll see if I can handle two day event <laughs> or not. But today we have Janet joining us now to talk about what they did in their library. So I will hand over to you to take it away and tell, tell us what you did, what you've been doing there. Thank you so much. Um, welcome. I'm so glad you guys are um, here today. And um, I can share with you um, some of the fantastic programs my library um, has been doing in the past few years. Um, I am the library director. I am reusing the slides that I used um, this past year at the Illinois Library Association's conference. Um, at that uh, session, I also have my circulation manager and my adult program and outreach coordinator with me. Um, they're not in my office today, but I still wanted to give them um, props for um, all their input for this um, presentation that we did. Um, so, if you do, ha I do at the end of this uh, presentation have a slide for if you have questions, but I'm absolutely happy if you want to ask them um, during the presentation at any time we could stop and talk about um, any questions if you need more details um, instead of waiting to the end. Um, so don't be shy and ask questions. Um, um, so I'm just going to give you a little bit of some stats because I always feel like that's one thing people say, um, well, how big are you um, in comparison to your own library that you're, that you're at? So our population, the village, is 2,893, but we are a larger district population of 7,993. So I also um, went ahead and did some updates on some of our uh, numbers so you can see that we in the last year had 3,642 cardholders, and now we are up to 5,065. And that's a great, great increase. And um, a big part of that is we've been going out into the community. So we will go to um, our Sparks of the Park, it's something that our community has every year around the 4th of July. 
And so we are actually going out and taking our iPad and having a tent and we are asking you know, people to sign up for the card. So we're trying to get out in the community. We're going to the schools, make sure all the kids have uh, library cards. So we're actually, you know, leaving the library building, which you're going to hear me say several times because that's one of the things you have to do if you're going to be engaging with your whole community, not just the patrons that are coming in, um, you know, your regulars that come in um, every couple of weeks or sometimes every day. Um, but going out and finding those people who aren't using the library, maybe don't even know where the library building is. Um, so we've had a great increase. Um, in several of our numbers over the past couple of years, and that's um, really because we've been doing so much outreach. So we'll be talking more about that um, in future slides. But um, another number, so I have five full-time employees, myself and four other employees, and then I have six part-time. So uh, compared to other libraries, that might seem, you know, small libraries who only have two people, we seem really large, but if you compare to a lot of the large libraries in Chicago, area or Springfield, which we're um, right outside of Springfield, um, we're very small compared to them. Um, so I also wanted to show you like the number of adult programs, um, the number of just our total overall um, programs offered. Um, our visit, our library visitor number has um, really gone up. We have 89, over 89,000 people coming into the library. Um, every year, so it's a, just a great number. One thing that we are really trying to do is we are hoping to hit over 100,000 checkouts. That's kind of our, our, our next goal. We like to set more goals for ourselves, and we would love to see that number increase. Um, and so we're hoping that um, next year we can, we've even got a big sign up and we're gonna keep um, tallies each month so that the uh, patrons can see with us that if we could, going to hit that number and I think involving them like helping you know asking them to you know check out keep checking out so that you can help us reach this number I think will um, be a big benefit um, to us to reach that number so um, that is just our number so you can kind of see compared to where you're at so um, one of the first things that we started was a donation center and um, it kind of started with, um, we had a young man who asked if we could do a coat drive. And so we were like, that's a fantastic idea. So we'll, we'll do a coat drive. And then the next thing I thought of was like, my kids um, are out of the school district. They're, they're in college. And so, but I still could do, you know, collect the box tops. Well, you can't just walk into the school and give them your baggie full of box tops because they don't just let everybody in the school building if you don't have children. So I thought, why don't we collect them here? There's got to be a lot more people like myself. Let's collect them here at the library, and then we'll get them to the school. And um, with that, then it just kind of took on a life of its own. And we do like to have some, set some, a little bit of guidelines and rules for things, but we're also very flexible and kind of just let it flow. Like if a patron says, hey, can you um, collect uh, uh, the milk carton tops for um, the 4-H, then we're going to go like, that's a great idea. Let's do it. And then we just, you know, it's so easy. We've got these baskets. We just put a flyer on it. We put it out in our newsletter and social media and, um, and just let the community donate. And then we just make sure that it gets to the right people it needs to go to. So um, it has grown. It started off with just a couple baskets and a couple of things that we're collecting, as you can see from the list. Um, we, we, are <laughs> we are asked to, um, uh, to collect things, um, and sometimes we'll do it. It's a one-time only. Sometimes it's an ongoing, like the eyeglasses and hearing aids for the Lions Club. That's one of those that we have. Every month we have that basket out there, and we collect hundreds of uh, used eyeglasses and um, usually turn that in monthly to uh, the Lions Club. Um, another one that we did was the pillowcases um, for little dresses for Africa and um, which the first time we um, advertised it we were hoping to get like 25, 50 uh, pillowcases made um, and it actually <laughs> our first run we had 500. So sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming uh, that this community is very generous. 
um, and it's a good problem to have, um, but sometimes um, you think it's going to be a smaller and you have to also then plan that, okay, I now have to ship all these dresses. So I just put out a message asking if we could get some donations to help with that shipping. And then the next thing we know, the church was joining us. And so it these things, you know, you have to be flexible and listen to the community um, and not be so rigid and think this is the way I'm going to do it. This is my project. I'm doing it this way. You have to be able to listen and work with the community um, so that we're, you know, we're all in this together. So um, another thing that we do um, that many of you probably do is the food for fines. Um, and we also do the uh, school supply drives. And um, those have been really well received in the community. Um, the other thing um, I will talk about a little bit long in another slide is the fleece for Project Linus. Um, that has been one that we've had so many people um, in different organizations, organizations want to join us in. Um, I'm going to go to the next one, though, and we'll just go ahead and talk about our seed library. I went to another library and I saw this great program and I was very intrigued about um, creating a seed library. So I started talking to people in my community and found out that a lot of them wanted to start their own little gardens and um, wanted to know more information. And so then I checked with like and you probably have something um, similar in your area. Our, our U of I has an extension. They have master gardeners. Um, and most of those organizations will come out and do your programs um, for free. Um, and so kind of getting people interested in it, we start having the programs. Um, and so then we went and um, to that library where I saw the, a really great display of how they had their set up. And so I said, can you share some of this with me? I would like to get this started. I have this old library card catalog that we're not using. Um, I would like to use it. And um, so he so generously uh, shared all his templates with me. And so now we have created our seed library and I share the templates with anyone who would like them also because why reinvent the wheel? And sharing is what we really do so well in libraries. And so, um, I was very happy um, to get his information. Um, and then he's also happy that I'm, I was able to tweak it enough to fit my needs and then we're able to um, share it with other libraries who are now starting their seed library. Um, uh, yeah, Janet, I have to, I just wanted to say, I love that you're using that old card catalog. It's a, that's where you're holding it. That's a great use of one of those. <laughs> Isn't it awesome? It's, and he had one, and so I really stole yeah. that away from him, but I absolutely love it. And um, if you could actually see my office, I, I go and save old card catalogs that people don't longer want. And I'm like, how can you just be getting rid of this? I want it. <laughs> so. That's one of my goals someday to have one of my own. I haven't found any yet that I can, you know, you know people, lots of libraries do sell them off or auction them or something. So you keep your eyes open, you can find them, yeah. And they are the perfect size for mm -hmm. a seed library. For those seed packets, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and, um, so, you know, we, he, we were able to take so much of the information that he had um, and tweak it to really fit our needs. Um, we didn't have to go in. It wasn't so labor intensive. Like, you know, we were able to already had a jumping off point. And he shared the things that didn't uh, work out as well as he thought or, you know, what worked and what didn't work. And so, then we, we've done the same thing, like this didn't work or this worked better doing it this way and how we let people check them out and how, you know, when people bring seeds back to us, you know, but all that is, um, we've got a great system now set up. Um, so it's not really labor intensive for our, my staff. Um, the very first time it was, um, you know, contacting different companies to get uh, seeds donated to us and then sorting those seeds and putting them into the little packets. But now we have people who love it who come in and say, when do we need to sort seeds for you? You know, so once you get people who are interested, the people who are coming to the classes, the people who are actually checking them out, um, 
they will volunteer and help with you because they that's their passion is you know, gardening. So, and I am happy to say that this year I had three tomato plants. And so I'm excited because I kill all plants. And um, I was so excited that my journey in this is that I now, I have picked three tomatoes. <laughs> I have three plants. I have more growing, but three that are uh, ripe now. So um, I feel like a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Exactly. You finally found the seeds that work for you. Exactly. Exactly. And so, you know, if that's just one person's feeling, you know how many people had, we have had 250 in 2017, 250 seed packs were checked out. I mean, you're making an impact, you're making a difference. And um, we had our youngest uh, patron check them out was a seven year old young man and he wanted to grow lettuce. And you'll see in a uh, slide coming up shortly, he was actually one of our youngest vendors at our farmer's market. Um, and he brought his lettuce. <laughs> so just fun stories that you can share that, um, you know, are making a difference and small, just a small difference, but that's a difference, you know? So um, we're educating people. Um, we put out all of our gardening books and they get checked out. Um, so it helps with having those displays. Um, so we'll, we always do like a display at, at different times of the different gardening things and put the books right where people are looking for them. Like if you're going over to the seed, area that we put books all around it um, and it, so it helps our stats which is always another big plus um, so something that uh, we took over uh, this is our third year and um, our village um, no longer could afford to run the summer recreation program and it has as you'll see from the numbers, um, first, when we took it over, um, we had 551 kids signed up for this program. So it's very, it's a very important program in our community. Uh, the children are excited for it. The parents are excited for it. They start lining up a half an hour before it even starts for registration. Um, we couldn't just let that go. So we decided that we would incorporate it in with our programs. And so um, the first year, it was a lot of work. And I'm not saying that every library should do this, but it's so amazing. Um, we're slowly incorporating it with our summer reading. Um, so that is our, that's in, our end goal is that it'll just become a summer reading, summer rec one program. Um, the thing with this so far is that each of these instructors um, charge a fee. And so, you know, the library programs are mostly all free. So we're still trying to figure out how we can navigate um, actually making it a free program. Um, we haven't gotten there yet, but we are, this is what's something that we're really uh, working on. And I think that, you know, that the sports and the arts and crafts, um, all these programs are important. And we also then, you know, really tie it into different books that they can read um, with keeping them active during the summer um, and continuing to learn, I think is um, so important. And this, I mean, just the numbers of children and the parents coming, looking forward to this program every year, um, just makes me know that it's so important to the community um, and that's what we're here for for the community um, so we listen to them and we know that um, this is what they want so um, just as this community what I have found I've been here for six years I probably didn't mention at the beginning um, when I first came in I had some of my own ideas when I walked in like I saw there were only six computers and I was like I came from a library that had 20 computers just for patrons. So my first my first reaction was this this library is going to need more computers. Well no this library did not need more computers. I, you know after the first year of watching and seeing what was happening, people come in with their laptops and they want our Wi-Fi. They don't they're the computers there are six computers never have a line. We have very fast internet so and we have very nice computers. It's just because they have their own devices and would rather come in with their laptops. And that's this is how it works for this community. And another um, thing that I found is that we offered a slime class 
a library free program and we had six kids show up for it. We offered slime class, the same class through our summer recreation where they had to pay $5 for the class. We had it filled up within minutes and had 10 kids. We ended up doing three classes, so 30 kids. So it's just another one of those things that they want to pay for the class and the free class had so much lower attendance. So um, just one of those quirky things that you find out your community is different than mm -hmm. other communities. Huh. That's very interesting. Like having it associated yeah. with something else that didn't catch on to it, but as its own thing. Yes. It made very, sense. Huh. Yeah. It's very interesting. And, yeah. I don't, and it's, you know, it's like, well, you want to pay the $5. Okay. It's the same <laughs> class. <laughs> and it was actually um, our, one of our employees who taught it. So back same class. But it works here, and that was, you know, 30 kids who learned to make slime and had great fun. So, uh, you know, that's that. this is the part where we're kind of trying to figure out how the summer rec and summer reading can go together, you know, what the paying and not paying kind of part of it. Mm -hmm. But uh, we don't have... The, A question we, about the summer rec, too. Um, where do you... I see a lot of these pictures appear, they might be taking place in the library, but for the outside thing um, events, do you just still hold them elsewhere in the town, even though the village couldn't afford to actually run the programs, do you still use those locations or is everything done at the library? How is that? We actually have, um, we have the, we can use the park and we have several churches who volunteer their spaces. Okay. Um, some of the locations that we go to, um, like our local um, pizza place that we have, you can go in and the kids get to make their pizzas and they show them how the back room, how things work. And then we have a Cookie Blue that's a chocolatier. You know, he makes the chocolate and um, he goes in and has a class about where the cocoa bean comes from. And then they actually get to design their own chocolate bar. And so we, those are actually at those locations. Um, and it's a great partnership between us and local businesses because you know mm -hmm. it's in there so uh, it's a win-win situation for those programs so yes we do, we have them in um, at different locations we do like all the arts and crafts here at the library mostly mm -hmm. um, but church use lets us use the basketball courts uh, the uh, park has a different uh, area for them to play the goalies and we have baseball at the park so um, we, that is a great partnership that, that we're able to get uh, free spaces to use. Mm -hmm. Great. So um, it's been a lot of work, but it's so rewarding because um, it's so many kids are, are, are part of this. So, and that's um, also, we have over 500 kids participate in summer reading also. So some of them are in both things and some are separate. They don't, they don't necessarily are in both programs, but um, so we have a, a community that really um, active and really appreciates the library and they want um, their education is important in the community also. Um, so I think that's um, a part of our success with our numbers um, is, you know, the community rallies around um, education and sports and uh, it's just a, a good community um, where the schools are very are, are a lot of people move into this community for the schools um, so that always is um, a helpful thing for libraries we have families who are going to come to story times so who are going to uh, come in and check out books for their children so um, the next one I'll talk to you about We'll talk about the farmer's market and this this um i came from a community that had a, a an awesome farmer's market um and so when i came here and there was no farmer's market i was like oh well i can go downtown springfield and, but you've been down to, you know any big community place there's no parking it's just a hassle and and so i was thinking that surely we should have a um uh, market here. Nobody wanted to start it. So then I found a, a couple people who were really um, excited to think about having a market. And so then um, 
we all talked with my friends at the library and they thought it was a great idea. And like two months later, we started a farmer's market. <laughs> and this will be our third year. And it has grown. Our first market had three vendors. <laughs> and we do it every Saturday and it's out on the library parking lot. And um, it has now grown. Um, last Saturday, I believe we had probably 20 vendors. We have music. We have um, demonstrators come by. We have nonprofits. Um, we have like Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. Um, so every week we do this from, uh, say, like the first weekend in June through the first weekend in October, every Saturday. Um, another thing that we just tried this pet this year, we started is um, we were doing no direct sales vendors. Our farmers really wanted it to have that farmer's feel, so it had to be, you know, it could be crafts, but it had to be handmade crafts. Um, we wanted, um, we didn't want it to get taken over by direct sales vendors. We had so many of those vendors calling us and saying, can we be part of this? that we decided that last Saturday of every month, so four Saturdays, we would do an inside um, sales um, in our community room, and that would be for the uh, direct sales vendors. Um, those are your like Mary Kay, Tupperware, you know, th those kinds of um, uh, small business. Um, and so we've done it two times and that is um, working out wonderful. Uh, our direct sales people would like to be here every Saturday. Um, and so next year we will be reevaluating. And I think that's another, another um, thing to keep in mind is that you always, you know, you start off with an idea and then you just let it grow and you try to keep everyone happy because we want to keep our, our vendors who've been with us from the very beginning happy. But we also uh, want to, um, make the other people in our community who are happy, those, those direct sales uh, people. So we're, we're uh, trying to figure out and balance this in a good way. Um, so far, what we're doing this year is, help, uh, is working. Um, another thing that we are I'm really excited for, um, we just got our equipment in, and um, here in Illinois, it's called SNAP Benefits. So um, back in the day, they were called food stamps. Um, but um, so those people who um, get that, that debit card uh, with their SNAP benefits on it will actually be able to come to the farmer's market and uh, buy their produce. Um, that is a lot, you know, it's anything that's through the government takes a little bit of time, but I've gone through all the paperwork and we finally have it. And um, so we're really excited because um, I, I think that's, you know, something that we should definitely have. Um, and so I'll be excited, hopefully this next Saturday to see how it goes. Um, but I, I'm sure um, that we will we have people in the community who will be very happy um, that we now have this service for them. Um, one thing, um, you know, it's what has made this a success is the partnerships. Um, reaching out to Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, the churches, um, non any nonprofit organization, um, and I actually have let's see, my next page. We'll show you. This is like one of our um, Facebook postings that we did. Um, it shows all the different types of vendors. Um, we've had a couple um, food trucks even uh, come to our market. Uh, we had someone who uh, who is a baker, and then we have also had a coffee guy who has um, now has a food truck. So um, our vendors um, are fantastic. Um, like I said, it keeps growing. Uh, my hopes would be that maybe someday that the village would uh, maybe want to take this over and let it be down at the park when we run out of space in our. Uh, we don't have that big of a uh, parking lot and um, we still and luckily this starts before the um, most of this is before the libraries open we open it at 10 so um, there's enough parking um, for everyone 
but it does take up half the parking lot and so i mean i feel like a really great place would be the park but i think um you know if i get it going uh running smoothly smoothly and can show them that it's no cost to them you know that's my kind of my hope is that it becomes a village uh, ran event um just because um, it is a lot for the library and the friends to take on. And now they are asking that we do, um, our vendors are asking that we have a couple of holiday events inside the library uh, in our community room. So we're, in, uh, we're discussing that right now. Um, and I will have to say um, that I am surrounded by a great team of, of staff um, who go above and beyond to make these things happen. Um, so that's another Another plus that I have is that they, you know, don't mind giving up Saturdays and working um, to make this happen. And um, I think it takes a whole team um, of really dedicated people to um, make these programs happen. And because we are going, I think, above and beyond what a lot of uh, libraries do. And I do want to say, though, there was a library up north who came to my conference um, presentation and they have started their farmers market in conjunction with their parks department and um, she just let me know that they're doing one a month so they'll have four markets but it's really exciting whenever you do a presentation and then someone um, lets you know how it went for them and what they start so that was um, pretty exciting the next thing I want to talk about is our little free libraries and um, so we partnered with Boy Scouts and asked if they could help us with the installation. I uh, checked with my village. They let me have two different areas. One is near a bike trail and one is down at the park. Um, and then we just checked this once a month and uh, make sure that the books are, um, that has adequate books. We just try to put paperbacks and put kids books and adult books and some teen books in there. Um, and I'm lucky to say that nobody, there's been no vandalism, there's been no damage, um, that our patrons are getting really good about putting books in there. At first, they were just taking the books and it was never being replenished, so we were constantly, you know, going up there and putting more books out. Um, but um, now it has really caught on where they're starting to put the books in. And um, so it was just a, that is a great project if you have any in your, um, community they're just they're so much fun um i know that a lot of the moms when they're the strollers they're pushing the kids the kids always want to get out and you know and uh get books from the little library um i did on this um for the actual installation the post and the other um, items needed i did write a small grant from lowe's um they are very good at giving money especially when you're, you have a partnership with we had with the Boy Scouts for doing this. Um, and then along with that, um, I wanted to say from the Little Free Library, we did um, an action book club. And we took that straight from the Little Free Library site. And um, one of them that we did is we read Dewey Everyone knows Dewey, the cat. And so then we partnered with our local um, shelter and our, we did a craft with it and it was bringing in old t-shirts and then creating these toys for, for the animals. Um, they have a brand new program that I'm uh, just starting to look into with it. Um, it is um, their new theme is come together and i really like um, they have a book selection list on there so you can take from kids teens and adults um and so i'm really thinking this could be a great pro program in our community um so i i like the idea that you know we're reading a book and then we're taking action to do some, you know, it combines good reads with good deeds kind of thing. And um, yeah, yeah, I like that. That That is more than just doing a book club. Yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, 
and people want to do awesome things in their community. Sometimes they want to donate, they want to help. They sometimes they just don't know where or how they to. Just need someone to guide them and say, yes. "Here, do the thing. Here, do this." Yeah. And people like to be social in a group. Like our crafting classes go over really well because you sit at the social time. Mm-hmm. That you talk and you're and and I think that's people really want that. They really they need it. You know, we're in a society where we're really cut off by with computers. And they want that person to person, you know, in person talking. And so um, we've had a great success with it. Um, I really, I, I love the idea of the kids and the teens um, reading books that, um, you know, will talk about encourage unity and um, understanding, you know, especially at this time in, this, in the world, you know, like just start to understand each other, listen. Um, to each other, and so I think that um, this is a great time for this type of uh, a book club, and then it also gives you different um, ideas um, with the books as to uh, who you can partner with and what you could do. Um, you know, it could be going just going to the park and picking up trash, you know, but you do it as a group, and I think I think um, that's a great way to get the community involved, and so. I'm hoping that next year I will have that, have even more with it happening with the kids and the teens. Um, we also started uh, another one, a part of our crafting. Um, we did, we just called it crafting for a cause. And so this is where we uh, would meet once, once a month and uh, we would have the pattern available. We also, um, also have our programs be passive. So if you can't make the meetings, we have the um, instructions and the materials. So we have actually the crafting section in our library, um, shelving units, where we have all the craft books at, and then we have uh, different um, materials. We have lots of yarn and fleece and stamps, and we, do, we have so much stuff. We take donated things, and um, people can check those out. Um, so if you want to try different types of crochet needles, um, we have um, a sewing machine. Uh, we have just lots of things that would have been donated um, and some things that we have purchased. Um, but we always have the kit there um, so that you can, if some people, you know, would rather just do it on their own or if their schedule doesn't um, match up with the night we're having it. Um, and so um, we've done that. Um, one of our things that um, we always leave out is the uh, for Project Linus, and those are the fleece blankets, and they're so easy to make. Um, they're the tie knot uh, blankets, um, two pieces of fleece. You cut cut them in small strips on the ends, and you tie them. And you can buy them as kits, or you can just buy two pieces of fleece. And we have tons of people. <laughs> we put it. It got. It was in the newspaper, um, the Springfield newspaper, and we started getting actually boxes of fleece being donated to us. And uh, we have one lady who donates regularly, every like three months, sends us a box of stuff. So then we put it out uh, for people to uh, to make the blankets. And then we have a person in the community who is our coordinator who takes those blankets to the hospitals. Um, we've had Girl Scouts come in to do these um, um, blankets. We've had, um, oh, we take uh, kits to the um, assisted living. Um, they love to do to do the blankets. Um, we'll just have, you know, grandparents and their grandkids come in especially during the summer, like you can tell that they're coming to visit or whatever. They come in and do projects and they just sit down at the tables and take the craft stuff and, and make them. Um, so I think that's another part of um, is having those passive programs that people can just pick it up themselves and, and do it. Um, as you can see from um, this, this year's stats, I asked her to give me her total stats and uh, she had, um, this year we've collected 490 items so <laughs> it's a lot but it's great um so we've really tapped into our community our crafters our people who want to give back to to society you know the people who really care um to be doing good 
I think. Um, and I think um, the staff also uh, is passionate about these things. So I think that also helps that we, um, we like to craft <laughs> and we like to read books and we like to talk. And so I think uh, having people who are working um, that are passionate about the programs is a big plus because we talk them up. We just, in, in conversation, um, you bring it up. And once you ask somebody in person to attend something, I think it goes a lot further than they just read it in the newsletter. Um, and we do. We have a uh, we have a, qu a quarterly newsletter that is mailed to everyone's home. And we also have that online. And we have a email blast that we use. And um, we put um, we put it out on all the social medias. So we have we do a lot of our marketing. Um, but I still think the best way is word of mouth. I feel like when you're at that circulation desk, you have to have people who are going to say, you take out a craft book that they need to then be on point to say, hey, I see you like crafts. Did you know that we have a craft class that meets once a month? And you have to be um, proactive, um, thinking about how you can tie in what they're checking out and what they're, what they're talking to you about into other programs that we have and making that personal invitation to them. Um, gets a lot more um, program attendance um, than just putting it on a flyer and having it up on a wall that nobody really brings. <laughs> so, um, and I have wanted to um, do away with the mailing of the newsletter because I know most people, when the mail comes and you, you just think, oh, that's junk mail and you throw it away. But I have people in the community who will not allow that to happen, that they love getting that newsletter and they love to have that calendar that they pull out and put it on the refrigerator and they know the dates of when the events are happening. Um, so not everyone is has moved on to just technology. I have personally, and <laughs> but you, that doesn't mean your community has. And so you, you have to keep doing what's best for your community, not what you may personally feel like hey, I use my Google Calendar for everything, and I just, for me, paper is not um, what I'm looking for, but I do have a community who wants that uh, newsletter, and so I'm listening to them and doing mm -hmm. what they want. I think that's a big yeah. part. I think that's very a very important comment. I hope everybody listens to that what you think is good for them might not match with what they actually want and that you do have a whole level multiple levels of people at varying comfort with technology or paper or whatever and um, all of them are your um, your community and your users and potential users too that you might not have brought in yet and, and that that's the real important thing is um, you know trying to reach out to people who are not used in the library. Right? For me, that, that seems like such an odd thing. Like, how could you, how do you live without using a library? Because I grew up in a library. I've always been in libraries. My children have always been in libraries. So, so for me, it's a very foreign thing to be like, I have run into people and they're like, oh, we have a library? And I'm just like, what? how do you, how are you living without a library? Um, and we are such a, you know, such a value, like just financially, I feel like, you can check out DVDs, books, you know, to me, it just is a so such a foreign idea to not know where your library is and not be using it. Um, but there are, there are people out there. And so we have to go out to those places. Um, so mm -hmm. one thing we did is we do a, a they call it, we call it Cabin Fever, and it's our adult reading program. Because our summers are so busy with summer reading, farmer's market, and and uh, summer rack, there's just no way we're going to do an adult reading program during the, the summer. So we do it during the winter. And um, so one thing we did, at the end of the two months, they do a trivia night. So we thought, let's change it up a bit. And if you can see from the one picture, we actually did our trivia night at uh, a local a restaurant slash sports bar. And um, they actually do a trivia once one night a, a week, I believe. And so they just tagged, we just tagged onto that and did it as a library um, 
trivia night, um, just to get out and, and, and get in touch with maybe some people who weren't uh, using the library. So we thought, let's take it out of the library, go someplace different. Um, we've, in the past, had always done it in our um, community room. Um, the one thing I am seeing with this is that our, our numbers are, are dropping a bit. And so that's another thing that I'm absolutely okay with. If we've done a program forever and ever and ever, and sometimes they just run their course. And, you know, my whole donation center, it, you know, a couple years down the road, it might not be doing as well as it was doing. And it's okay then to let that program go and start fresh with something else. Try something different. Maybe maybe the trivia is they don't want to do a trivia night anymore. I mean, there's so many different things to think about, but it's okay when your number starts to, to go down to just let that program go the direction it's heading. Um, I, that's one thing with my staff. I tell them, you know, if, a, if, a, if you have an idea or if a patron has an idea, we will try it. You know, if, if fiscally we can, but we will try it. And if it fails, that's okay too. Like that's, that's fine. We've learned from something from this and we will try it a different way. Or if we did try something two years ago and it did not go off so well, well, it could have been timing, could have been the date, it could have been so many different factors that if somebody wants to try it again and we can afford to do that, then we're going to try it again. Um, just one time if it doesn't go right doesn't mean that it's not going to be a good fit later. Um, so, but my staff all know that, um, you know, try it. Um, I'm always open to new ideas. Um, they have a lot of free reign with their creativity. Um, and I think when it's something that they're passionate about, it's something that they really enjoy, um, it's going to be a better success. Um, we have a, along with this, we also have, um, like most libraries, we have um, a day book club, we have an evening book club, and we have a book to movie um, book club. I have three different book clubs, and it, they are ran by three different people. So my adult program coordinator does the day book club, but I have another employee who does the evening, and then I have another employee who does the book to movie, because those are the things that they're passionate about. The day book club does not read the same books as the evening. It's a totally two different set of patrons who are coming in. Um, the same as the book to movie. It's a certain group of people that are coming in and they're looking for a certain type of book, a certain type of, of movie. And my three people who are in charge of that are, are, are doing what that group wants. That makes sense. They, it's not what book they want to read or what they're hearing other people read. It's what that group as a whole, what the kinds of things that they want. And they know how much of a stretch of, of they will like. Like some of them may not want any kind of violence in the book, so we don't even go there. Um, so they get to know the group um, really well. Um, and not that other people can't join, because it does it kind of, you know, one night there might be 20 people, the next night there might be 15. So, um, but they have different, I think we're giving the uh, patrons different types of book clubs, not just a different, like, oh, this is science fiction. It's, the, there's, it's just um, the day people are going to be um, your people who don't want to drive in the evening. So it's generally the older people, it's retired people. Um, and so they just have a different um, set of what their requirements that they want for their books um, and we um, kind of ask everybody like what books do you like what are authors that you really enjoy um, so they do a really good job with listening to the group as a whole and then coming up with titles um, that best fits that group's needs and, and what they're wanting to read um, oh gosh I'm talking too much aren't I? okay so um, some additional community engagement things that we do. We also participate in the Sparks in the Park Parade. We, uh, the homecoming parade, um, we do like a festival of trees. That is supposed to be our, our courtyard garden and the back of our library um, is what uh, that thing was right there. Uh, 
And then we also do charity walks. Um, we don't do every charity walk, of course, but we have different groups of us who, if someone asks us to walk in it, we we uh, we like to uh, participate. And so it's just another way of getting out in the community and being, you know, they see us out in the community, not just in the building. So does anyone have questions? <clears throat> All right. Yes. Um, anybody have any questions uh, for Janet here? Any uh, questions, comments, thoughts on anything she mentioned? Um, I chimed in with a few, of course, during uh, the pre your presentation. I, I think it's really great you've done, you've taken some, many of your things that you do are taken some very traditional things that libraries doing and kind of given them a little twist. Um, like the specific book clubs, and lots of libraries do book clubs, but I love that you've got those with those different themes um, of what people might be interested in. Um, the books, movie ones, I'm, a, I'm a particularly interested in. That sounds like a really cool. People have opinions, very strong sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> on, should this have even been made into a movie? And was the, <laughs> is the book better? Um, and sometimes I've, I've seen people say sometimes the movie was better. <gasps> no way. I have never, never, ever <laughs> had that. I bet, you know, I, I just, yeah, I guess your imagination is always better than what. <laughs> yeah, everybody's got a different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does anybody have any, anything you want to say or anything you want to share about anything you were doing at your library that you want to share? Um, while we're waiting to see if there is, um, as you can see here, Janet's got her um, contact information here, as well as her other staff members that were involved in these um, programs. Um, after uh, today's show, we'll get the recording up. And Janet, if you want to send me this slide deck, I think it's great. It's got a lot of good info. Um, you can send me the, the, the presentation, and I'll upload it as well to the archive. Perfect. Thank you. So everyone will have access to that and some of your tips and tricks and ideas on there. Gonna give a couple more seconds to see if anybody wants to say anything, any more than before. And I do have to say this is so much different than giving a live presentation where you see people's faces and you can interact and uh -huh. <laughs> my screen is so different. <laughs> here we go. Uh, here's a face, I'm here. <laughs> um, it is, yes, webinars are, I, I, um, it is a very different situation definitely. Um, and I know our uh, audience, I'm sure they feel the same way. Um, sometimes we have the camera views of our presenters and sometimes we don't as well. Uh, it is different, but I, I'm glad that we were able to do it and get this information out to more people who can't potentially attend these presentations in person. So uh, we'll keep going as long as we have people that want to do it. <laughs> All right, it doesn't look like anybody has any urgent questions at the moment. So um, I think I will um, hold back presenter control. Thank you very much, uh, Janet, for presenting, um, joining us today and sharing what you are doing. There we go. At your library. Uh, and thank you everyone for attending. Um, the show has been, is being recorded and will be on our website. This is our Encompass Live website here that I'm showing you now. Uh, if you Google Encompass Live in your search engine of choice, anyone that you want, we are the only thing called that so far on the internet. Yay. So you should come up with our page. We have our upcoming shows here, but our archives, where um, today's show will be posted, are listed after our upcoming shows. There's a link here for archived Encompass Live sessions. The most recent ones go to the top of the page. So today's show will be up here at the top, probably just later this afternoon. Um, once it's all processed and everything through GoToWebinar and YouTube, we'll have a link to the recording and a link to the presentation, just like this one that was from last week will be on here. Everyone who attended live this morning and who registered for today's show, we sent an email directly letting you know that the recording is available and ready. And we also post that information out to our various social media channels, uh, Facebook, Twitter, etc. Uh, you can see here we also do have a search feature for our archives. This is the tenth year of Encompass Live, so we and we do have our archives going back all the way to the beginning, uh, which was January 2009. Um, I won't scroll down this whole list here to you know make you dizzy, but they are all here. Um, so you will find some things in our archives that are old, of course, um, potentially outdated, um, expired programs, things that don't exist anymore. But we are librarians, so we archive things, keep things for historical purposes. 
So you can do a search on here, searching all of our archives, going back to the very beginning or just the most recent 12 months if you just want current up-to-date information. But you can see as you look at any of these sessions, they do all have dates. So you will be able to see when something actually was broadcast live. So you can take that into consideration when you're watching a particular show, when you do go into the archives. And the dates are here on the sessions. They're, um, the, they're dated when they were, were recorded in YouTube. So you'll know exactly when it went live. So that is where our archive will be. I uh, hope you join us next week when our topic is Ditching Dewey. Now, there's a controversial subject for some people. <laughs> How we converted from Dewey to Bisac and lived to tell about it. Um, Parchment Community Library in Parchment, Michigan, have, their library has done this. And their director, uh, Teresa Stanner, is going to be with us next week to talk about how they made the switch um, in their library. So definitely sign up for that. Any of our other sessions that we have here, I've got some for September that are getting confirmed as we speak. So you should see the first couple September dates being added to the, the schedule here within the next week or so. So keep an eye on that for any of our other sh upcoming shows. Also, Encompass Live is on Facebook. We've got links here and in our individual sessions to the Encompass Live Facebook page. If you are a big Facebook user, give us a like over there and you'll get notified of things things that we're doing. Here's a reminder to log in for today's show. And when our recordings are available, we post on here as well. Uh, somewhere down here should be, here's an announcement of the recording from last week's show. So yes, if you like to use Facebook, um, give us a like and you'll keep up to date on the things we're doing over there. Uh, other than that, that wraps it up for today's show. Thank you very much, Janet, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and thank you everyone for attending and hopefully we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.